One Zambia, One Nation, thank you so much for joining us on the news desk. We are coming to you from the mass media complex in Osaka. This is Danis News, the top stories. Government to continue with the construction of markets. Luangwa farmers trained in honey processing. And Rufunsa Member of Parliament commissions 15 bohos. Compliments of the season, my name is Emos Zulu. Vice President Mutanela Lumango has handed over the refurbished southern part of the Lusaka city market to the local authority, which was gutted by fire in 2017. Mrs. Nalumango has disclosed that government will continue to construct more markets for traders and marketeers to allow them to operate in designated trading places. Wupesen were reports that the vice president, however, gave a two weeks ultimatum to the Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit, DMMU, and the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development to ensure that the issue of water and sanitation is addressed. <laughs> It was a joyous moment for traders and marketeers at the Lusaka City Market as Vice President Mutalena Lumango officially handed over the rehabilitated Lusaka City Market. Mrs. Nalumango records the sad incident of an inferno at one of the largest markets in the country that was reported on July 4, 2017, stating that sources of income for many was affected. The government may recall that the market was gutted by mysterious fire, though there was finger pointing, it should not, should not have been that. In the early hours of Tuesday, 4th of July, 2017, the most affected part as we have heard, even through the Honorable Minister and the, uh, the Director of Ceremony, was the Southern Park, with approximately 1,379 stands, which were completely consumed by the infernal. Subsequently, about a quarter of the Southern Park of the market, housing 529 stands, had its roof removed for the purpose of stopping the fire from spreading to the other part or section of the market. That was a sad day. The vice president called on marketeers and traders to move to designated areas of trading as government continues to construct more markets. Minister of Local Government and Rural Development Gary Nkombo said the issue of water and sanitation at the Lusaka City Market will soon be addressed. His Excellency the President, Mr. Adam Chairman, believes in that we must make sure that we improve the water and sanitation for our people. This was sort of overlooked. We take the blame, Madam Vice President, for this oversight and make a pledge to you that we will continue our support. We are going to make as many toilets, as many showers that have running water and not buckets for this, to this market to function and be attractive to people, where people can go and use and answer the call of nature in conditions that we need at home. And the area member of parliament commended government for prioritizing the rehabilitation of the Lusaka city market. It's so humbling to the Vice President that uh, we are seated here, we are smiling, like you can see, I was smiling. We are smiling that people now are going to have a decent trading place. Wopesendo reporting for Zanis in Osaka. 
Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security Jack Mwimbo says government is aware of the poor state of some police stations and staff houses around the country. Mr. Mwimbo, who is on a familiarization tour of police stations in Pemba and Mose districts, assured that government is working on addressing the challenges that officers are facing. Pemba is among the new districts that have been earmarked for the construction of the new district administration facilities, which will include the police station. Pemba was granted district status in 2012, but has been grappling with lack of infrastructure to support service provision to the people. Home Affairs and Internal Security Minister Jack Mwimbu has visited the police station in Pemba. We have a challenge of uh, office accommodation. We also have a challenge of accommodation. Most of these are dilapidated. The minister has assured the people of Pemba of government support. The government uh, has a commitment to the district leadership and people of Pemba that a uh, new infrastructure will have to be put in place. A proper police station will be constructed at an appropriate time when funds are available. Meanwhile, the minister has directed the police in southern province to arrest cattle rustling, which is getting out of hand. There are complaints that are coming from various areas of southern province pertaining to cattle rustling. Through the command of uh, the police in southern province, I would like to direct that this vice should stop. If a person is arrested for cataracty, let the due process of the law be implemented. Home Affairs Minister is on a tour in Southern Province to inspect various government programs under his ministry. Chintunangamba, Fozanis News in Pemba District, Southern Province. Choma District Dairy Cooperative Union is appealing to milk processors to consider increasing the price of milk per litre from the current nine kwacha to a much higher price. Cooperative chairperson Mwemba Mungombwe says the current price is making it difficult for small-scale dairy farmers to meet their livestock management costs. Kostak Mudenda has more. Southern province boasts of being the highest producer of milk. This is attributed to having the highest number of cattle coupled with the small-scale dairy farmers who produce more than 220,000 liters of milk during that season and more than 140,000 liters during the dry season. Choma District Dairy Cooperative alone has the capacity of producing about 2,600 liters of milk on daily basis in that season and about 1,200 in dry season. Right now we are doing about 2,600 liters per day, as you know, because of the rain season. And we're able to supply to daily gold almost uh, 2,000, 3,000 liters. who are at least buying our milk at nine kwacha. Then we are paying the farmers eight kwacha per liter. Currently, the province is supplying about 55,000 liters of milk to daily gold. The liters, the one we collect this time around, it's 55 or 57,000 approximately. Come here normally every day, daily basis. We've got many centers in southern province. Milk production has become a lucrative business for cooperatives and individual smallholder farmers. Bringing milk to dairy cooperative is beneficial. Through this same business, I have managed to buy two more cows. We supply milk here as a cooperative. Despite the successes, challenges are also there that affect the economic strength of the small scale dairy farmers. The prices of milk they tend to be low. If they can assist us, these processors at least by 10 kwacha. So we are calling to the processors if they can at least increase the prices, maybe it goes to 10 kwacha, 15 kwacha, so that we are able to satisfy each other. The other one is uh, the feeds, they are too expensive. I can say just to be precise, like Mesbran, we are getting Mesbran at 60, 61 kwacha, one bag, which is just almost 22 kgs. 
then we are getting number three mil at almost 75 kwacha, which as a result, the farmers, they they having a problem in terms of trying to buy feed because of the prices. The dairy sector is a viable industry that can contribute to poverty reduction among smallholder farmers. Costa Kimudenda, Zanis, in Choma District, Southern Province. We move to one of the stories making headlines in our news where government working in partnership with the United Church of Zambia, UCZ, through the Mpongwe Beekeeping Project, have trained 18 longer based bee lead farmers in honey processing, value addition and packaging. Mpongwe Beekeeping Project Unit Manager Christabel Mumba says the project was established to empower and to provide local farmers with market for their honey. 18 out of the 100 bee farmers in Wangwa district have been empowered with knowledge and skills in honey processing. The project unit manager explained the importance and benefits of venturing into beekeeping. Go back and become a beekeeper from another level. Because in beekeeping you don't need any input. Sign. Every year in, year out, you just have to put up your hives and buy everything, just one off investments, and that's it. Dikones Mumba has called on the bee farmers to work hard to help grow their businesses in the district. She further urged the bee farmers to plant more trees and preserve the environment to grow their businesses. And again, we can also go into the habit of planting trees in our, uh, uh, our farms. Because as a farmer, when we cut all the trees, the bees will go. They will no longer be there. We'll find that our hives are empty. Representing the participants, Michael Mkangada thanked government and the church for empowering them with knowledge and skills. We also learned to safeguard our land, more especially the trees. The 18 lead farmers are among the 100 bee farmers in Luangwa district who are beneficiaries of the strengthening climate resilience of agricultural livelihood in agroecological regions 1 and 2 in Zambia's Skrala project. The bee lead farmers were accompanied by Luangwa district acting agricultural officer Derek Sinkala and five camp extension officers, Lista Ndumba, Luangwa District. Thank you, Lista, for that report. Rufunsa Member of Parliament, Shiu Mliata, has commissioned 15 boreholes to cushion the water challenges in her constituency. Mrs. Mliata, who is also Lusaka Province Minister, says the boreholes were drilled at a total cost of 658,000 kwacha under the Constituency Development Fund. She's back in Wundawunda Ward of Rufunsa District in Lusaka province. Ms. Shiomriata, Rufunsa constituency member of parliament, who is also Lusaka province minister, is here to officially commission a boho drilled at Union Police Post. A total of 15 bohos have been drilled in Rufunsa District under the Constituency Development Fund CTF. This is not just on paper, it is reality, and this is why we are here to witness and celebrate today that to improve access to clean water in our district, a total of 15 boreholes have been drilled and equipped in Wunda Wunda and Mwachilele wards at a total cost of 658,000 kwacha. Ms. Muriata has also assured the local residents of government's commitment to develop the area. It's very important, councillor, that the people know the information it is your duty, councillor, that each and every village, they must know what the CDF is doing. Rufunsa District Council Chairperson Kenneth Mylon was also present at the event. My appeal is that let us keep these doors jealously. It me hope that in the near future we will not have anyone struggle to access, to access clean water. Jonathan Mka reporting for Zanis News in Rufunsa, Lusaka province. In other news, the Road Development Agency, RDA, has commenced works 
on the Rhone Section 1 bridge, which is prone to flooding every rainy season, making the Kapindula Road impassable. The bridge connects the Rhone Antelope General Hospital to the Central Business District and Luansha constituency. Here are the details. This is Section 1 bridge connecting Luansha constituency to Rhone General Hospital, which is situated in Rhone constituency. Every rainy season, road users face challenges in connecting between the two places as the road gets impassable due to flooding of the bridge. Fortunately, government through the Road Development Agency has started working on the bridge. This bridge has been giving us problems. Sometimes uh, you, you agree with me that sometimes we do even close this road and divert into the mining uh, route. But once we do this job, I'm sure this thing will be a, a, a problem of the past. And my humble appeal is that I, as I keep on engaging a Minister of Infrastructure and Finance, and of course other stakeholders, uh, the local authority, we need to see that from here. We do a good job. The development has cheered the residents. We are grateful for the roadworks. We used to suffer a lot when the bridge gets flooded. I'm very sure. Once the bridge is done, it will be easy for us to take patients to the general hospital. One only hopes that once the works are completed, the problem of flooding will be a thing of the past. Karen Mshenwa, Zanis, Luansha District. Now, as Christmas Day draws near, a time of giving, First Lady Mutinta Hichilema has handed over, hand, over 110 Christmas baby hampers to the Ministry of Health to be distributed to 21 health facilities within Lusaka. Mrs. Hichilema says hampers worth over 184,000 kwacha have been donated by Standard Bank. Jane Simalumba has the rest of the story. First Lady Mutinta Hichilema was today at Stay in School Initiative officers with one agenda to distribute these Christmas baby hampers. The baby hampers that have been donated by Stanbic Bank will be distributed to 21 health facilities in Lusaka. Mrs. Hichlema thanked Stanbic Bank for the gesture. We are here this morning to hand over 110 baby hampers that will be given to Christmas babies. And these hampers costed 104,500. Our wish, Madam Minister, is to see these hampers be distributed to the level one hospitals in Lusaka, which is Kanyama, Shawama, Matero, Mandevo and all others. Unlike the tradition where we used to donate to UTH all the time. As we all know, festival season is a gentle reminder of Christ's love for humanity. It's time to give, to share the little we have with our communities. Minister of Health Sylvia Masebo was at hand to receive the donation from the First Lady. Miss Masebo took advantage of the event and called upon mothers and pregnant women to be giving birth from health facilities as opposed from homes. This event, we use it as a tool to raise awareness so that people can understand, can appreciate the importance of giving birth in a health facility, in a clinic, in a hospital as opposed to giving birth at home. Because during birth time, we note that we lose babies. Sometimes we lose mothers. And that should not happen when we have health facilities that are very close to the family. She then called upon other stakeholders to emulate the bank and share with communities the little that they have. So really, I think I want to join our first lady in calling on the business community to help us be able to put a smile to our parents and to our children and to our babies in the country. So we really want to thank you, Madam First Lady, that you were able to remember us. Jane Simalumbazanis in Lusaka. 
Luapula Province Permanent Secretary Mighty Mumba has handed over a newly constructed one by three classroom block at Chisulo Primary School in Kawamba District. The classroom block was built by the Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit, DMMU, as part of the Infrastructure Risk Reduction Strategy and Quality Standard Model for Construction Projects in Remote Areas. We have the following report. The Chisulo community's delight cannot be overemphasized as they are recipients of what is anticipated to be a strong structure. In a bid to mitigate risks at some schools hard hit with weather-induced infrastructural damage in Luapla province, the Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit has embarked on constructing damage-resilient classroom blocks as a benchmark under a concept it calls Build Back Better. Handing over a DMMU newly constructed 1x3 classroom block at Chisulo Primary School in Kawamba District, Luapla Province Permanent Secretary, Mighty Mumba reiterated the government's resolve to deliver projects based on its three principles of cost, quality, and timeliness. Let us embark on modernizing all structures in the district. I can attest to the fact that this is a special structure with a different, different approach altogether. Just to set an example, as we move forward as a country and as a province, you know, 20, almost 26 million. PS come second January next year 2023. This new block yala new. And Wapla Province DMMU Regional Coordinator disclosed that other classroom projects currently underway include the one by three classroom block at Mupeta in Chipili district as well as Kashe in Mwansabombo district and a one by four classroom block at Makasa in Sanfia district. We realized that we needed to set a standard as demanded in our Zambia National Disaster Risk Management Framework so that we can uphold disaster risk reduction. Providing free education for us which we are enjoying today. Thanks to you, the people why the beauty of this facility. David Ndovi, reporting for Zanis. And lastly, in our news, Mongo Central Constituency Development Fund, Chairperson Sikuni Somupo, says 100 desks have been locally procured at a cost of 140,000 kwacha. Mr. Mupo says the desks will be distributed to Mandanga Combined Secondary School in Mongo District. The Constituency Development Fund is the only way that infrastructure development can be improved. For this reason, the Constituency Development Fund Committee in Mong Central Constituency has embarked on purchasing school desks in order to improve the learning environment for learners in all the schools in the constituency. Skuniso Mupo is the Mongo Central Constituency CDF chairperson. Mongo Central Constituency CDF uh, office. So we have supplied or we managed to arrange for the supply of 100 desks to Mandanga Combined School. So, so far we have supplied um, almost 90 now. So we are remaining with only 10 more to wind up the work. And Mongo Central Constituency Member of Parliament, Oliver Amtike, said in the next three years, no school-going child will be sitting on the floor. This is what CDF is doing in Mongo Central. You can see desks being purchased for all our schools where our children are sitting, are currently sitting on the floor. So the idea is that in the next three years in Mongo Central, no child will sit on the floor. Everybody will have a desk. So we have a program to buy desks in, the, in all the schools of Mongo Central, as well as uh, replace structures that are not complete like those. You see uh, across there, we just have a, a roofing on top, uh, but no proper structure. Through CDF, we are building new classrooms like those in all our schools in Mongo Central. In the next three years, no such structures will exist. No school made out of uh, mud or grass will exist. And that's what uh, the new Don government is doing. Meanwhile, Sari Mutemwa, a teacher at Mandanga Combined Secondary School, has appreciated the gesture. I'd like to appreciate for uh, receiving the desks. So, uh, the delivery of the desks is uh, 
a welcome move. It has helped to reduce uh, the problem of um, uh, deaths that uh, children face. So just this classroom you are seeing here uh, accommodates about uh, 120 learners in the morning and uh, in the afternoon 120 to 140. So we really face a challenge of this. So this move will help to alleviate that, uh, that challenge. Besides the uh, other challenge of uh, classroom space. Darlington Kabambe reporting for Zanis News in Mongu District, Western Province. That report by Darlington Kabambe brings us to the end of the news. We recap on the top stories. Government to continue with the construction of markets. Luangwa farmers trained in honey processing. And Rufunsa Member of Parliament commissions 15 bohos. You can access these and many other stories on our website, zanis.com.zm. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Emos Zulu. Bye for now.